Hey all, great stories today, don't waste time, jump right in. So, this happened my second semester dorming at my college campus. I had met my roommate at orientation and could kind of already tell she was going to be a pain in my donkey. And I was right about that. I had planned on moving rooms to be closer to some friends the next semester. But, let me get to the story that lead to my revenge. On our campus you had to pay for meals using your student ID which had a certain amount of money on it each semester. You could also use an app that you put your name and ID info into and it makes it easier to pay. But, the name and ID must match for it to work, which will be important later. Any funds from the fall semester would roll over into the spring. But, then at the end of spring it would just expire. Because of this, and because I only ate once or two a day, I had a ton saved up on my card. My roommate on the other hand, did not. So, I offered to pay for some of her meals from time to time in trade of her picking up the food for us. Which involved her using my card twice in person and then she'd return it. Then, one day, I noticed on my app that my card was being charged even when I was not ordering food. And not just a meal, like a meal for several people. This meant that whoever was ordering, I wonder who, either had to have stolen my ID card, which I had in my pocket when I got the charge, or was impersonating my info in the app, which are both big nanos on my campus. I was quick to put two and two together and was pretty pissed. I was initially going to confront her on it, but decided to formulate a plan instead. That day I went and ordered a second ID card for $25 to use for later. As it took a couple of weeks to get the new one. I let her charge several things to my card over a good two weeks. For her and her friends. And she wasn't very good at hiding it either. As they would come to our dorm and eat. While I just screenshot and sent emails to the support team of the app about the charges, knowing nothing would get done until I contacted someone in person. And one day it got even better, as you can buy groceries with the card off campus as well. She decided to pay for alcohol with my card which doesn't get pinged as an issue on my card due to me being over 21 but, she was only 19. Not sure how she got it, but it was just the thing to finally act on my plan. I put my best sad face on and contacted the head of campus living and head of my dorm about the charges on my account. I dropped some hints that it could be my roommate and mentioned I got a new ID and asked what I should do. I was told to order a new card and once I got it, to deactivate my current ID and use the new one for purchases now making my old ID have a balance of zero dollars and also to ping if someone uses it to buy anything. They also told me they would be visiting my dorm to discuss the issue with my roommate. I accepted that and waited. They sent the confirmation email that they would be visiting and I just decided to add more fuel to the fire. My roommate was groaning about not having the funds for food in front of me in our dorm. I told her I really couldn't help her as I was running low on funds and she kind of just laughed it off and left the room to probably go use my old ID. I deactivated my first card right after she left and surprise surprise she used my info to pay. Except when she tried to pay for her and her friends this time, it was declined and it pinged that my ID was used. Campus security was called and she was escorted back to our dorm. Pretty much perfect timing for our meeting with campus living. She was scared poopless when they came to the dorm to talk and look through her stuff. On her phone, still logged into the app was my ID information and name. And in her dorm closet was a half full bottle of cheap vodka. And on my phone was a screenshot of said unauthorized vodka purchase. In the end she was forced to pay me back all the funds she used, in cash, reported for underage drinking which automatically suspends you from campus living for AT at least a year, and would have on her record that she performed identity theft which I also could have charged her for out of school. In the end, I got to have my own dorm for the remainder of that semester and even part of the semester after. Because it wasn't put as an available room for new dormers. I did get all my money back, from her parents, who were so embarrassed and apologized profusely. And when she did eventually come back to campus no one wanted to dorm with her because they knew she had stolen her roommate's ID. I think in the end she rented off campus. So, my friend and I were in our second year of college together, and were roommates. We were both transfers and going into senior year, and had been renting an apartment for the past year. The two of us had lived with three other people the first year, but they graduated and moved out. The apartment had two rooms, and a den with double doors that could be used for one person. We had had two people in each room and one in the den. We needed to find people to replace our old housemates, 
and my friend knew a couple people who were living together and wanted to move to a new place together. She talked to them and set everything up before summer, so that way during the fall we would already have everything figured out. We signed the lease before summer vacation and everything seemed fine. One girl wanted to rent out the big room to herself, and would pay full price for it, let's call her Sharon. The other one would live in the den who I will call Carrie. There would only be four of us instead of five the coming year, which we were looking forward to. However, over the summer, Sharon started having second thoughts about living with Carrie. Apparently while living together they'd had some issues. Sharon called my friend and I and told us that apparently Carrie had pushed her down the stairs while they were living together, and she bought pepper spray and a taser just in case. According to Sharon, one night they thought they heard someone trying to break into their apartment and were standing at the top of the stairs listening, when Carrie told Sharon to go check it out. Sharon didn't want to go, so Carrie pushed her and Sharon fell down the stairs. We asked Carrie about this, but she said that while they heard suspicious activity and called the police, she never pushed Sharon down the stairs. My friend and I didn't know what to believe and ultimately told Sharon they'd have to work it out, since she was the one having doubts. We also told her that if she changed her mind we'd need at least a month's notice. Sharon decided she still wanted to live with us and was okay living with the other girl, so we thought it was fine. Summer passes and fall arrives, Sharon is moving in. Carrie is planning on moving in a few days later. However, Sharon brings someone over to the apartment, and starts showing her around. She apparently wanted a roommate and wanted us to sign the new person onto our lease with an addendum, but she hadn't talked to us about it before. Apparently, she still didn't feel safe with Carrie around, and said she'd feel safer with a roommate. She told her potential roommate she hadn't known she'd be living with Carrie, even though the four of us had signed addendum to put them both on the lease at the same time. My friend and I thought things were getting weird at this point and started feeling concerned. Unfortunately, our lease was going to expire soon and we needed to sign the lease renewal in a few days, and we couldn't get an addendum to sign the new person on until we signed the lease renewal. My friend and I had let the Sharon and Carrie know this in advance and they had agreed beforehand to sign it. If we didn't sign it in time, we would have to start an entirely new lease, and the price would go up a lot which we couldn't afford, so if we didn't sign our new lease agreement in time, we would all have to find another place to live. Since school was about to start, it would have been hard to find another place to live so quickly. This wouldn't have been an issue, but then Sharon was afraid that Carrie wouldn't sign the new person onto the lease, and said she wouldn't sign the lease renewal if we didn't add her roommate first. We got pissed because she had never even asked us if we were okay with living with one more person, or let us know beforehand, and now she was risking everyone's place to stay to try and make us sign someone we'd never met onto the lease. We told Sharon we couldn't sign her roommate on before renewing the lease since we had to renew it so soon, which was the apartment's rules. She kept making more demands, and told us that if we didn't do what she wanted, then she wouldn't sign the lease renewal and we'd all be without a place to live. She wanted me to observe a verbal agreement as a third-party person, between her and Carrie, where Carrie would agree to sign the new person onto the lease after we signed the lease renewal. I told her I wasn't comfortable with this. So this is where the fun starts. Carrie seemed nice so far, and my friend and I were really uncomfortable with how Sharon was acting. She continued to move all of her stuff in while telling us her conditions. We wouldn't agree to any of them, not only because there was no way to meet them under the rules of our apartment complex, but also because we weren't going to let this girl control us like that, and make us live with someone we didn't know if we wanted to live with. However, then Sharon came up with a clever idea. She said that we could sign her off of the lease with an addendum, then sign the lease renewal with Carrie, and then sign her and her roommate back onto the lease, that way she would have no chance of getting stuck on the lease without a roommate. My friend and I told her that we agreed to this, and told Carrie as well, who also agreed. My friend and I went to the office to let them know, so they wrote the addendum to take Sharon off of the lease. Everyone in the apartment had to sign it in order for it to be valid. My friend, Carrie and I signed it, and waited for Sharon to sign it after telling her it was ready. She went downstairs and signed herself off of the lease. After this, she came back up, and my friend and I informed her that we would not be signing her back onto the lease. She got really upset. She told us that if we didn't want to live with her she would have signed herself off anyways, but we didn't believe her. She started crying, and told us that she had just finished setting up her desk. We didn't care. She had threatened three other people's security and place to live, as well as her potential roommates. 
she went outside and slammed the door. My friend and I were relieved it was over and that we wouldn't be losing our apartment. We just needed to find someone to take her place. Sharon came back in with a smug look on her face and told me she had her mom on the phone and her mom wanted to talk to one of us. I took the phone and put it on speaker while my friend listened. Carrie went to her space and closed the door. When I answered the phone, Sharon's mom went off on me. She called me a harlot and told me to go to hell. I stayed calm and told her that I stood by the decision we made. She told me to go to hell several more times, then she told me Sharon had nowhere to go and I didn't give a rat's butt. I told her she was right, I didn't. Her mom told me to go to hell one more time and hung up. I gave the phone back to Sharon, who seemed surprised that I wasn't intimidated. She whispered sorry as I gave her phone back to her. Then she went to her room to take her stuff apart and start packing. Since we paid the lease in advance for our place, as per the apartment's rules, Sharon had paid to stay until the end of the month, so we let her stay until then. This gave her about 5 days to figure something else out. She made it as difficult as possible, but eventually left. Pretty sure I didn't see her on campus or anything after that, so that was the last time I saw her. The best part is that the girl who was going to be Sharon's roommate still needed a place to stay so we signed her onto the lease and helped her find a roommate. It was actually a fairly lengthy battle, but in the end we won our apartment back. Word of advice, don't sign people onto your lease months in advance, even if they will pay for their room while they're not there. People can make a lot of changes in a few months, and if they don't know you they won't care about ducking you over. What did you think, what would you have done differently, share your opinions in the comments. And if you enjoyed the stories, slap that like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.